So section 10.4, we're going to add and subtract some radicals. Now, here's what you need to know about adding and subtracting. This is going to be very, very, very similar to doing things like this. Can you add those together? Yes. How much you get? 12 Wait, 12 what? 12 x. Oh, okay, that's the whole question I have for you. Do you get 12x or you, do you get 12x squared? 12x okay. because you're not multiplying. You're not multiplying, that's right. You have 5x's here, you have 7x's there, together you have 12x's. You don't have 12x squared, right? When you go to the grocery store and you get five apples, and you go, ah, I need more apples. So of course, everyone needs more apples. And you get seven apples, do you get 12 square apples? <laughs> That'd be kind of cool, but no, they'd be easier to cut. But you don't, right? You still have 12 apples. You don't change the units just because you're adding things together. If you have $5 plus $7, you don't get $12 squared, right? That doesn't make sense. Um, so when we're adding, when you're combining like terms, you look at this coefficients. Because you're able to add these, or, I'm sorry, you are able to add these because you have an x and you have an x. If this was an x and that was a y, could you add them? No. If this was an x and that was an x squared, could you add them? No. Okay, if you keep that in mind, Adding and subtracting radicals are going to go very smoothly for you. Because what we're doing, adding and subtracting radicals is very similar to combining like terms. That right there would give us 12x. How about that one? Do I have any like terms to combine there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are these like terms? Can I combine no. those? No. no. But I can combine these. Mm -hmm. What's the difference? They both have x's. Okay, so not only are we talking about the same variable, we're talking about the same variable with the same exponent. So here we combine these ones and get 7, 7 what? X squared. Good. Okay. Here you combine these and you get Very good. That's combined like terms. We've done this a lot. We, we, we know how to do that. But we are going to draw some similarities. You see, here's the deal. When you're talking about combining like terms, you're looking for the same exact variable but it has to be raised to the same power. Here's what that means for us. In radicals, we're not just looking for the same exact root. That would be the same exponent. For instance, uh, a square. These are, have the same exponent, right? The radicals are exponents. So you're, you are looking for the same exponent, same type of root, square root with square root, cube root with cube root, square with a square, a one with a one. You with me on that? But also, you're looking for the same exact base. That's like the same variable. So if this was a y, could I combine those two things? No. That wouldn't make sense. You'd have a different base. In our case, what that means is not only does the root have to be the same, like a square with a square, the base has to be the same. Or in our case, the radicand. The radicand is the base. The ra inside of the radical must be identical for you to add them and subtract them. So you have to have two things exactly the same. Same root, same radicand. Remember that. Let's look at this one. Remember, we're looking for two things here. We need the same root same radicand. Do you remember what that, that word radicand meant? Mm -hmm. I've been using it a lot up here. I had you go over a little while ago. Radicand was whatever's inside there is called your radicand. That's right. So when we look at this, it is like my like terms. Instead of looking for a variable to a power, you're looking for the same root, same radicand. Do I have the same type of root here? Yes. Yeah. What I mean there is that's a square root. That's a square root. That's the same root. This, folks, is identical to looking at the exponent here. 
that's what you're doing. A root is an exponent. You really are looking at the exponent. You're just in a, in a root form. This would be 15 to the 1 half power. This would be 15 to the 1 half power. Are you with me? That's what that is. So you are looking at the exponent when you're talking about the same root. Now the same radicand, that's like having an x and an x to some power, or an x and an x. So we look for the same root because that's our exponent, same radicand because that's like our base here. So do we have the same root and the same radicand? Yeah. 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 Are we going to be able to add these things? Yeah. Now the question is, what do you get when you add this? I know I'm probably going to get like a 7, right? Probably going to get a 7. Just like here, I had a, a 5, I had a 7 that gave me 12, I get a 5 and a 2 that's giving me 7. The question is, what do I get out of the root 15 and the root 15? Well, we're going to go ahead and look back up here. When we added a 5x and 7x, did the x change at all? No. No, we didn't, we didn't change it. We didn't get x to the second, right? So we're not going to get like a fourth root. We're going to still have a square root. Also, it's very, it is still like this. You have five x's here and you have seven x's here. Together you have 12 x's. You have five root 15's, you have two root 15's. All together you have seven what's? Root it doesn't magically change to 30. It does not magically change to 30. That's a big mistake that people make. People think addition, in their heads they go, hey, this is kind of fun, seven root 30. <laughs> Woo! No, we can't do that, okay? You're, you're adding like you're doing like terms. You have five in one thing, you have seven in one thing, you have 12 in that same thing. You have five of this thing, you have two of this thing, you have seven. Did I say five and seven, you get seven still? Yeah. Oops. <laughs> you get 12. You have five of this thing, you have two of this thing, you get seven of that same thing. That would be root 15. You don't change the root and you don't change the radicand when you're adding. Okay, 9 cube root 2y minus 13 cube root 2y. The first thing you must check for if you're trying to combine these radicals is like combine like terms. What are you looking for in this case? Root. Okay, do we have the same root? Mm -hmm. That's like your exponent. That is your exponent. And we also have to look for the same radicand. Do we have the same radicand? Yes. Can I combine these things? Yes. The way we do that is just like combining like terms, you look at the coefficients. Here are the coefficients 9. Here are the coefficient. Remember, you include your sign here is negative 13. So, we just look at 9 minus 13. If you do that, you can do this. How much is that? Negative so we get negative 4. What's the rest of it? Cube Still cube a cube root, okay. Of what? Perfect. That's it. That's it. It's kind of easier than you might, might have thought, right? I mean, really, as long as you have the same thing, you're not changing that. You're just adding or subtracting coefficients, just like you did with like terms. This is combining like terms, only now your terms are not x's or y's, they're roots. That's, that's it. Okay, let's go ahead and combine this one. How much are we going to get out of, out of that one? Wait a minute, why not? Well, wait, I still have a, I have a 10 and a 10, and there's a root around that. You mean I can't do that still? Oh, I see. So this would be like having a different power. It would be like trying to add these together. While the x's were the same, the powers were different, and you cannot combine those. We weren't able to combine these. We can't combine those, right? It's a different power. This is like having a different power. So in this case, what would you do? You leave it. That's what you're done. Okay, let's look at that one. Do I have the same type of root? Yes. yes. So we've already we've eliminated the problem we had here. Do we have the same radicand? No. Okay, so am I going to be able to add those? No. No, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. Not right now. However, I want you to look at that very carefully. I want you to look at the square root of 50 and the square root of 18 because that's what we have, right? 
can you simplify those? Yes. I, I sure hope so, because we just finished that section. If you can't, why well, I did not do my job right. right? We should be able to simplify those things. So what I'm trying to tell you here is that if you can't initially add them together, here if you look, that was simplified, that was simplified, that was simplified, that was simplified, and these were both simplified, as much as you could do. And that's why we could easily tell whether we could add them or not. Right? However, in this case, well, that one, I mean, the roots were different. There's no way you can add those. But in this case, we have the square root of 50. I know that 25 goes in that number. That's the square root of 18. I know that 9 goes in that number. We're looking for perfect squares. So I'm certainly going to be able to simplify those things. So before you say yes or no, whether you can add those or not, you better simplify them to make sure they're in the simplest form. That's why we spend all this time. If we hadn't done simplification, you look at that and go, no, I can't add those. When in fact, if we simplify them, we might be able to. So let's spend some time right now and simplify your radicals first. Let's simplify our radicals first. Square root of 50, as we already talked about, we're looking for perfect squares. I know 25 divides that number. I'm picking 25 because well, I'm not, not going to really spend a whole lot of time on this. We just did, just did that section. 25 because I can take a square root of that, and we're looking for perfect squares here. Plus, that 5 hangs out at the front. That 5 that hangs out there. Square root of 18. I know that's going to be what two numbers? 2 9. Good. I'm going to write the 9 first because that's the number I'm going on. After that, we simplify. It's like two problems in one. Square root of 25, ladies and gentlemen. And how about 2? What's going to happen with that? So would you agree that out of this part, I get 5 root 2? Okay. Then add a plus 8. Don't lose that 5. This means 5 times whatever you, you're going to get. This means 5 times whatever you're going to get over here. Are you with me on that? Mm -hmm. What's the square root of 9? So we're going to have 5 times 3. And ultimately, that's what's going to happen. And then the square root of 2, I, I can't do anything with that, so I'm going to get the root 2. I'd like to see if you're okay on that. Raise your hand if you are. All right with that. Good, all right. Basically, just simplifying this one, simplifying this one. That gives that. Let's make this a little bit prettier before we try to combine these things. I know the 5 root 2 up here, that's as good as I can get. But here I have 5 times 3 root 2. How much does that give you? 15. Sure. 15. Does it change the root 2? This is not a distribution problem. This is all being multiplied together. So when you had 5 times 3x, you just put 15x, right? You're not going to do 15 root 10. That's not what we're doing. This is not distribution. This is just multiplication. You just multiply those numbers. If you think about this like like terms, if you think about your root like a variable, it's not a variable, okay? But if you think about it like it's being treated like these numbers, it's a good stepping stone for you. It's similar. Not exactly the same, but very similar. Hey, can you combine those? Yes. Those are the same. I've got the same exact root. I've got the same exact radican. I've got 5 here. I've got 15 here. Total I have how much? Square root of 2, yes? You sure? Yeah, that's exactly right. So we're simplifying those radicals first. A lot of times we're going to get the situation where we have similar or the exact same root, same radicand, we can add them together. Richard, go on. You sure? Questions on that one? All right. We're not ready to go on? Are ready? 